Hello, my name is Carrie Brown and I'm with the Central Mississippi Regional Library System. Today I'm going to be reading to you chapters 1 and 2 of Calendar Mysteries May Magic, written by Ron Roy, illustrated by John Stephen Gurney, and published by Random House New York. Chapter 1 Brian's Great Idea. No, she won't. Bradley said. He and his twin brother were in their room. They were lying on their beds reading comics. Bradley was wearing his I'm Bradley t-shirt. The family dog, Pal, was chewing on a tennis ball. Yes, she will, Brian said. His bed was covered with toys, clothing, games, sneakers, books, and a damp bath towel. His t-shirt said, I'm Brian. Bet she won't, Bradley said. His bed was neat. Bet she will, Brian said. Their mother knocked and walked into the room. But I will what? She asked Brian. Brian wants to raise ducks, Bradley said. I told him you'd say no. Mrs. Pinto looked at Brian. Your bed is a mess, she said. She picked up the bath towel. And why do you want to raise ducks? Brian held up a page in his comic book. Look at this, Mom. Ducks can make me rich. His mother read the page. In big letters, an ad said, raise ducks and make big bucks. Darling, running a business is hard work, Brian's mother said. Besides, I can't even get you to clean your side of the room. If I clean my room, can I have ducks? Brian asked. No, dear, you're only six years old, his mother said. Besides, you already have a dog and a pony to play with. I don't want to play with ducks, Brian answered. He held up the comic again. It says here you can collect their feathers and make pillows. Then you sell the pillows and make a lot of money. Do you know how to make pillows? Brian's mother asked. Bradley giggled. Cinchy, Brian said. You just sew some cloth and stuff it with feathers. His mother smiled. Honey, you don't know how to sew. Bradley cracked up. Told you so, he said. Get it? So? Okay, you two, please get this room cleaned up, their mother said. Tomorrow is Mother's Day, and I want this house spotless. But my side is already spotless, Bradley said. So help your brother clean his side, his mother said as she left the bedroom with the towel. She stopped and turned around. If you do a good job, I'll give you each one dollar. Bradley put his comics neatly on his shelf. Get busy, Brian, he said. I like my side of the room messy, he said. Yeah, but Mom doesn't, and she's boss, Bradley said. Why can't we have a mom who lets us be slobs, Brian asked. He kicked some of the junk off his bed. Mother ducks don't make their baby ducks clean their rooms. Bradley laughed. Baby ducks don't have rooms, he said. They have ponds. Brian smiled. Let's build a pond in our room, he said. Then we can sneak in some ducks. Are you kidding? Bradley asked. Mom would have a cow. I don't want a cow, Brian said. He sighed and began tossing his junk into a closet. Are you going to help me? Sure, Bradley said. He began sorting Brian's comics and games and toys. What's this? He held up a sheet of paper. It came in the mail with one of my comics, Brian said. Bradley read the sheet. Hey, Bri, look at this. Bradley showed his brother a picture of a man with a top hat and mustache. Under the picture, it said, Hypno the Hypnotist is coming to Greenlawn, one night only. He's coming here? Brian asked. When? He's doing a show at the high school tonight, Bradley said. I wonder if Mom and Dad will let us go. Brian dropped a sneaker. I've got a better idea, he shouted. We'll take Mom to the show and ask the guy to hypnotize her. While she's in a trance, Hypo will tell her she loves ducks. Bradley shook his head. First, Mom would never go. She thinks hypnotists are all fake, he said. Second, I heard that hypnotism doesn't work if the person doesn't want to be hypnotized. And Mom would never let some guy put her in a trance. Just then, Josh walked into their room. This place is disgusting, he said. He kicked a foam ball out of his way. We're cleaning it, Bradley said. You'd better, Josh said. 
Mom wants the house looking good for Mother's Day tomorrow. I bought Mom her favorite nail polish. What'd you guys get her? Brian flopped on his bed. We have to buy a gift? He asked. Duh, Josh said. It's Mother's Day, bro. Dad bought her a nice bracelet. Bradley picked up his piggy bank and shook it. I've got a bunch of money, he announced. What should we get her, Brian? Brian grinned. Baby ducks? I know what she wants, Josh said. Tell us, Bradley shouted. She wants to go see Hypo the Hypnotist at the high school tonight, Josh said. She does, Bradley asked. I thought she hated those guys. Josh shrugged. All I know is what she told me, he said. She wants to see Hypo, and she wants to wear her new bracelet and nail polish. He kicked a soccer ball on his way out the, out of the room. An evil look came over Brian's face. Mom wants to go see Hypo? This is going to be perfect, he whispered. Chapter 2, The World's Greatest Hypnotist This is so exciting, Bradley and Brian's mother said. Thank you, boys, for taking me. But Mom, Bradley said, you always told us hypnotists were all phonies. His mother pointed to a giant poster of Hypo in front of the high school. Hypo isn't, she said. He's world famous. Come on, Brian said. Let's get some good seats. The high school auditorium was crowded and noisy. Bradley and Brian were joined by their best friends, Nate and Lucy. Josh went to sit with Lucy's cousin, Dink, and Nate's sister, Ruth Rose. Mrs. Pinto, I love your bracelet, Lucy said. Thank you, sweetie, Mrs. Pinto said. Mr. Pinto gave it to me for Mother's Day. She wiggled her fingers, and Josh gave me this pink nail polish. We bought our tickets to see Hypo, Brian said. I bought the tickets, Bradley said. Brian is broke. A few minutes later, the lights in the auditorium dimmed. The crowd became quiet. A round man with a bald head stepped in front of the curtain. He raised his arms and smiled. That's Mr. Creaky, the high school principal, Bradley's mother whispered. A lot of people clapped. Someone yelled, Hi, Mr. C, gonna get hypnotized? A boy hurried onto the stage and handed Mr. Creaky a microphone. Good evening, all, Mr. Creaky bellowed into the mic. His voice made a loud screechy noise all over the auditorium. Mr. Creaky held the mic further away from his mouth. Sorry about that, he said. No, I won't be hypnotized tonight, but some of you will. Now, without further delay, it is my pleasure to introduce Hypo, the world's greatest hypnotist. Mr. Creaky hurried off the stage just as the curtain behind him opened. The stage lights went out. The audience was staring at a completely black stage. I can't see anything, Nate whispered. This is spooky. Suddenly, a spotlight flashed on, making a circle on the stage. Inside the circle stood Hypo, wearing a tuxedo and top hat and holding a wand. A black mustache covered his upper lip. He bowed, and the audience began clapping and cheering. Then the rest of the stage was lit. Hypo was standing between a sofa and a tall booth. The booth was painted bright red with a gold curtain across its front. A water pitcher and glasses stood on a small table next to the booth. Good evening, one and all, said Hypo. His voice was deep and smooth. It flowed over the audience like melted chocolate. I love being back in Greenlawn. I attended this high school, the hypnotist said. Yes, I graduated 17 years ago. I used to work in the Shangri-La hotels on the weekends. I'd stop by Ellie's Diner for ice cream on my way to work. Mom, did you know that? Bradley whispered. She nodded and smiled. Hypo stepped closer to the audience. He grinned. Now, who would like to be hypnotized this evening? He asked. Bradley could hear some laughter coming from the front row. Then a teenager stood up. His friend shoved him toward the stage. Don't be shy, Hypo said. Hypo won't hurt you. The kids stumbled up the stairs and stood next to Hypo on the stage. Everyone clapped and whistled. What is your name, young man? Hypo asked the nervous boy. Ch Chad, the boy stuttered. Hello, Chad, Hypo said. Why do you want me to hypnotize you? Chad grinned. My friends dared me, he said. I didn't want to be a chicken. Hypo stared at Chad. Then he turned to the audience. 
Shall I turn Chad into a chicken? He asked. Make him cluck and eat bugs? No, someone yelled. Make him disappear. Everyone laughed. Chad held up his hands. Can you make me stop biting my nails? He asked. Goodness, Chad, Hypo said. Don't your parents feed you? You've chewed those nails entirely off your fingers. Bad Chad, one of his buddies yelled. Hypo pointed to the sofa with his wand. Please be seated, Chad. The boy sat. Now look into my eyes, Chad. Chad stared into Hypo's eyes. The audience was silent. Hypo slowly passed his wand before Chad's eyes. Back and forth went the wand. Close your eyes, Chad, Hypo said in a soft voice. Chad closed his eyes. The audience remained silent as Hypo spoke. Chad doesn't want to chew his nails. Hypo helps when all else fails. Soon this boy will be stronger. Then his nails will grow longer. When you open your eyes, your problem will be solved, Hypo said. You will never chew your nails again. Open your eyes, Chad. Chad opened his eyes. He blinked and grinned. Now, Chad, I want you to bite your nails, Hypo said. Do it, Chad. Chew those fingernails. Yum, yum. Fingernails are delicious. Chad moved one hand toward his mouth. Then he stopped. I can't do it, he said. Hypo pulled a wallet from his pocket. Chad, I will give you $20 if you chew your nails. Again, Chad tried, but he could not chew his nails. He grinned at Hypo. You're good, dude, he said. Hypo turned to the audience. Chad is cured, he cried. The audience cheered as Chad left the stage to join his friends. That was so cool, Brian said. He nudged Bradley. Hey, Mom, why don't you go get hypnotized? Thank you. Be sure to tune in next week for chapters three and four. Goodbye.